So what's left on the topic developers productivity? In the last episode, I already talked about um, the environments a bit, and I want to deep dive into that further. So what I personally found, at least in Germany, that it's mostly the case that people are working like nine to five in some offices. And I would say in most of the cases, it's not the best environment to working when it's quite noisy and you have a shared co-working space and so on and so forth. I mean, I understand that it's helpful to communicate with your co-workers and it's needed in most of the cases. Well, it depends on, on how you're working and if you're working on a task solely or a lot with integration with teammates um, regularly. But always is, it distracts co-workers if you're communicating and if you're talking quite, quite loudly. So what I personally found that you can concentrate way better if you work um, remotely or if you work in an own room or if you, or if you work somewhere where is it uh, where it's more quiet or where you can concentrate yourself really well and actually i want to share a story i personally discovered so in last august or july slash august i was in crete attending the great unconference java unconference of um, j crete and here's some pictures and as you may think well it's the in the island of uh, of crete and you probably think, well, we are all just um, enjoying ourselves and uh, enjoying time on the beach and that doesn't really count as working, right? Well, maybe, but if... Actually, what I found out, even if you're just working half of the day, like four, four hours, four to six hours, you can work even if more effectively in this time than staying a whole day for eight hours or longer in some noisy office in the middle of the city. Because you have the city, you ha um, have the noise around, you have traffic. Well, it totally depends where you're working, or at least this was uh, what I mostly found uh, found in Germany or in, um, in bigger companies. And actually, if you think about this, it's not the amount of time you put in, but the quality of time. So sometimes four hours working concentrated on a topic are better are, and are more effective than working 10 hours. So I would say uh, probably the, the concentration and quality uh, of time uh, curve is like quality of, um, quality of work and the time. It's something like asymptotic um, curve and the more time you spend, well, it, it doesn't uh, provide much more value if you spend even more time on one day. Sometimes it's better to do a rest and then start all over again on the next day. This is what I my personal recommendation. And the reason why I shared um, this J. Crete story is that I personally found that I could concentrate really well on this beach environment, on this uh, peaceful and quiet island in the middle of the ocean and actually get a lot of stuff done with well high quality of of time high quality of work way better than than somewhere in the city so actually if you think about this or even if you're an employer not that i think that employers watch my videos but maybe if you're an employer um maybe it, it changes you should change the way of thinking if your um, developers or if um, your employees just solely are working in the offices, that it's not, well, it should be allowed to, to take some, uh, some time off and work somewhere else, even if in a vacation environment, even um, at home. Actually, it's sometimes better to, if, um, if your employees can work in an environment that they, where they enjoy themselves and the output can be uh, can be much better. Having that said, um, I mean, there are a lot of remote companies out there uh, who make a totally good job by communicating over Slack, over email, over Google Hangouts, over Skype for business, whatsoever options are there. So there's actually no or not a lot of shortcomings uh, using this approach if uh, your company embraces this. And I personally would highly recommend to at least give that thought a try. Um, what else is there for developers and especially for environments? Um, 
we as developers tend to well, get into one thing. We tend to forget everything around us. We tend to forget ourselves, our body. We drink a lot of coffee. We sit uh, the whole day. So don't forget to make uh, yourself to make some pauses. Don't forget to stand up and stretch in a while. You may even think about trying a standing desk. So this is what I did and what I actually found quite positive. And all these things are just... Um, yeah, maybe think of, consider this once in a while. Um, what else? What else is there? What helped me personally in my developer's career? Um, I would say it helps a lot to read documentation. No, really. <laughs> um, no matter on which technical topic you're working, I know that developers tend to get hands down and uh, get into the code as quickly as possible and try stuff out and then if they get some problem google it look on stack overflow and so on and so forth but from time to time it actually helps to read the documentation not only how some specific topic works but also how the concepts of some technology are and i actually was in that situation um quite often where I tried something out and it for some reason, well, that's that's normal for us developers, right? Everybody knows that doesn't work. And then you spend quite um, quite some time on it. And then I looked into the documentation finally and said, well, yeah, I should have looked into this earlier. Actually, it's described here why it works uh, that way and so on and so forth. And this is what I found out quite often. So what I'm doing um, right now, I read uh, quite a lot about documentation about the concepts um, at first how something is supposed to work and I would say that it improves your whole understanding and makes you better developers so this is my personal recommendation it sounds really obvious I know but I also know that most of us uh, don't do this uh, regularly and especially this is true if you're working in Java EE because the specifications out there um, do a really good job describing how your technology is supposed to work. And all the JSRs defined in the JCP are actually the standard, the source of truth, how a technology is supposed to work and all the implementations have to follow that specification. So the easiest thing for you as developer is to read that specification and you can rely on it that that implementation will actually do the job as it is request required in the specification so you can rely on that stuff works as expected as it's written there and this is quite a helpful thing because you only have to read that once and all the different implementations have to follow this and so on and so forth and this is the truth so of course you can also look on stack overflow for some specific problem but if you read that specification the jcp um jsrs then well this is this is the truth for for the technology so this is um, the case if you're working in Java EE and actually this is what I'm uh, doing mostly as well. Just read the specifications, mostly they're written um, really well. And yeah, talking about documentation, you should also um, document yourself. And I know this is another quite boring topic and developers try to not document uh, things and try to avoid this topic, but Actually, it helps not only your co-workers or new co-worker in half a year, but also yourself. Because um, you, I would say you can't remember everything and you certainly can't remember something in half a year. Why you have done the things you have, uh, you have been doing today. And I found this out for, for myself as well. So even in a couple of weeks, I can remember why I have written a piece of code like this if it's not obvious. And then this should have been uh, documented. And your future self and your future coworkers uh, will thank you. So don't never document the obvious, but document why you have done um, something in that way. Document the technology choices and document anything that made you some problems which were not obvious so this is my personal recommendation and yeah what's uh, what else another topic you have to force yourself like if you find any refactoring uh, problem if you find any small task which is just a small thing um, I personally 
found uh, found I don't know where I read it uh, the two minutes principle and touch things only one once uh, concept that if you have some small refactoring some small task whatever that is if it's less than two minutes as a personal threshold then just do it right away because just the overhead of thinking about the problem maybe thinking about a solution already in your head and then postpone it to somewhere else where you have to think about that again even if it's just two minutes it won't help you if you just postpone it because the overall time of doing the things twice more or less is more than if you have just done it right away so help your future self of and forcing yourself to doing the small things um, just right away and this is true for refactoring tasks for smaller to do's for small emails and so on and so forth it's my personal recommendation so this is basically all I have on that topic the uh, video episodes actually got uh, longer than I have at first intended to do but I hoped I could give you some inspiration and give you some of the ideas and things that helped me personally in my developer's career. And now I would like to have some feedback from you if you found the video course episodes helpful and especially if you have some further things to add so, or even if you disagree with some stuff I said and if you have something to add that helped you personally and um, if it's automation, if it's tools or if it if it's concepts and ways of thinking that make you as a developer more productive and more effective. So I would love to hear your feedback and thanks a lot for watching. Bye.